On this episode, we talk about Tesla and the future of the self-driving car, next on Talking Cars. Hi there, this is Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. I'm George Kennedy. And I'm Jake Fisher. Uh, we got this comment on YouTube the other day. Why so much talk about gasoline cars? The only car that matters is a Tesla. A revolution is happening in the automotive industry in front of your eyes, and you guys are almost completely ignoring it. What a shame. Well, because every car on the road is an electric car now, clearly. That's true. And we've never mentioned the Tesla. We never have. Never tested one. Never scored the mm -hmm. best of any car we've We should. We done. should look into that. We, we should. We should. We should jump right on that. Get on it, George. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to hop in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've talked plenty about Tesla. In this episode, we're going to talk a lot more about Tesla. Last week, um, Elon Musk said they had the solution to range anxiety problems, and they had a press conference, and that really wasn't that big of a deal, but there was a big deal stuck in it. Explain. Yes, that is correct. So what the end of range anxiety was really an update in terms of the way the navigation system works, really, to cut right down to it. Mm -hmm. So the navigation system, so basically what it would do is, if you're driving someplace where you're going to be far away from a supercharger or a place to charge your, it'll, it'll let you know. It'll say, hey, don't go out into the great abyss because you're going to be so far away you might get stuck. You sure you want to do that? So that's kind of cool. So it really works with all of the supercharger stations around, which mm -hmm. are, are quite a lot of them. And it'll let you know where you could go and if they're free and all that. The other piece what it did, did is the way the navigation system works. So now you could go and get into your Tesla and you could say, I want to go from New York to California. You click the button. And it won't just say, here's the route, but it'll say, you need to go drive three hours and stop at this super supercharger station and charge it for 33 minutes. And then it'll take you to the next stop. So it'll actually create a route with the sufficient stops that you'll need to keep yourself charged. That doesn't sound like a whole lot of news. But what was more interesting about the press conference was what is coming down the pike. I mean, he talked a lot about um, operating system seven. So, I mean, this is, it's, a, it's, it's like such out of the Apple playbook, right? You know, I mean, the icons are changed. No, the icons aren't changed. But what it, is being downloaded to the cars of the future is a lot of self-driving capability. Um, I mean, they're really, really going fast and forward on this stuff. I mean, we've talked to other manufacturers, and every other manufacturer is kind of like, yeah, we're capable of doing self-driving. It's just the, the legislation has to keep up with it. And, you know, NHTSA, it's not really in the rules or whatever. You know, Tesla, they, they, they kind of don't wait for that. I mean, in our Tesla, I mean, there's a full web browser. I'm not sure which NHTSA rule says that's okay to have a full web browser <laughs> while you drive. But they're like, eh, we're going to do it. Um, what they're doing is they're taking self-driving cars and they're saying, we're going to make that happen. So what we're talking about is cars that will drive themselves. They're talking about they have the test Model S where they could drive it from L.A. to San Francisco all by itself. They're talking about cars that do Batman stuff, quite honestly. It's like, <laughs> I want my car. It comes out of the garage. It comes and presents itself to yourself. Now, or, I mean, or, you, or you hit the button and it'll go park itself. Other car companies have shown that. BMW showed that with their i3. <clears throat> They've shown it, but it looks like we're talking three months from now. Tesla is going to have an over-the-air update where these cars are going to be enabled. Now, they do realize there are laws about these cars driving themselves. Right, right. So they'll say, you only use it when you're not on public roads. But this is going to be very interesting. Is anyone interesting. going to follow that rule? That, that's a, that's I mean, a wink and a nod, on. absolutely. I mean, people are going to use it. And, you know, in that sort of... Tesla not only is sort of just running in the face of regulators, which, you know, they're slow to move. And they, Tesla is a smaller, more nimble company. They want to move at the rate that they are capable of mm. in terms of innovation. Mm -hmm. The thing is that these are things, you know, especially the web browser, it's like, you know, a lot of, um, you know, cars with compliance in the American market don't have, they lock out features of the touchscreen when you're driving. That's great, but if you lock that out, what are you going to do? You're going to go to your, your smartphone. You know, that nanny state kind of stuff really doesn't, doesn't work because you can't fight human nature. Tesla knows how people are using their cars, and they're just going to th let you have it and let you use it and with sort of a wink and a nod. Tesla knows how people are using their cars because they monitor it continuously, <laughs> yeah. basically. I was at a um, conference uh, last week, uh, the GPU conference, uh, Graphics Processing Unit conference. You know, and, you know, it was run by NVIDIA, who is the processor manufacturer for the, the two screens that are in, in the Tesla. And it just sort of, first of all, Silicon Valley is a very different place. It's a very, we can do that. Don't you worry. 
we'll take care of that. You know, it, it, we if we can think of it, we can do it. It's not a problem. Um, but you know, it was it was so interesting because Elon Musk spoke at this, and he talked about a lot about self-driving cars. But he said the regulations are going to run behind. You know, and maybe that makes sense. It's a very conservative look. It's cars driving themselves. You know, maybe it pays to be conservative. It's probably going to run a year or two be, at least behind the technology. But what they're able to do is run the cars in shadow mode. So basically, the car can be self-driving, and it can say, oh, well, I prevented that accident. Mm. I prevented that accident. I prevented that accident. Look, this is, this is safe. L let's go forward with this. Well, you know, I mean, it's interesting about, you know, the regulation <coughs> running behind. Um, they can't keep up. You know, when it comes to cars, okay, fine. You could you could keep up with cars, okay? Cars are kind of, uh, there's engines and there's lights and where, you know, you, you put the, they're the, not the even, center high. They're not even keeping up with cars. Yeah, because, they, they haven't been able to compete, uh, keep up with Mercedes and other Europeans. Shifters. Oh, actually, shifters, you're right. You're the absolutely touchscreen. right. A great example is, you know, in the, the mid-2000s, Mercedes first had that that rotating touchscreen, uh, the digital screen that you could <clears> see <throat> a movie for the, the passenger and it could tilt back to the driver. And, you know, and regulators squash that. And by the time they came around to that, Mercedes already had another system, which was a hologram that lets you see two different images out of the same screen. And regulators squash that. But so, there's, you know, the, the rate that innovation happens in the, in the auto industry, and people always want the newest stuff. The automakers want to push the newest stuff. And the, the regulators just can't keep up but, with that. But when you look at it, okay, so, so when it's the old hardware stuff, Regulators were pretty good, okay? We're not gonna have sealed beams anymore. We're gonna have halogens and that kind of stuff, okay? But, you know, what I'm thinking about, you know, is, is the electronics. I mean, they can't, they can't, because you're writing these electronics, you're, you're writing in, like, guidelines for navigation systems back in the day when no one had a nav system on their phone. I mean, things mm -hmm. have changed so quickly. But, but I think to your point, which you were trying to get at, is they aren't even keeping up with simple controls in terms of deregulation of the Prindle, right? Park, you know, the shifters. It's all over the place. It doesn't make any sense anymore. You got people shutting off the, you know, on the Lincoln, you're people pressing buttons the, and the, shutting the off MKC, the engine. The MKC, because, they're yeah. updating it. You've got cars that you can't figure out where, which way is reverse or drive. So when a train's coming at you, you can't get out of the way of a train. Not quickly, because you got to relearn it. Right. Um, so, so it... And, and doing all that, I mean, yeah. because in order to... You know, you're going into this with a regulation mindset. In order to do that, you have to, there's legal rules of how much you have to justify everything. So mm -hmm. it needs to have research. Research takes time, especially if you're going to have a lot of people in it. And any sort of human factors thing, you need to have these big groups of people. And it, it's slow. But, it, but it, it's the life cycle. It's the way cars used to be designed. Mm -hmm. used to be like, you come up with a new car to be in the planning for seven yeah. years. And then when it comes out, it's, it's got a six year life cycle. We're getting to this point, I mean, we're talking about Tesla here. We're, 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 it doesn't sound like a car anymore. It sounds like an iPhone. Well, you, you know, know, consumers <clears throat> through the mobile industry have come to expect a rapid pace of advancement in their features in both software and hardware. And, you know, talking to, you know, folks from the car industry, the last thing that they do when they're <clears throat> designing a new car, the last thing they book in is the, the technology, because they know if they started that you know, seven years ago, it would be exceptionally outdated by the time it makes its way into the car. But, but the, the continual updating of it, I mean, that's what, you know, it's like, okay, fine, you know, you might have an iPhone, you keep it for a year and a half or two years until the next one comes out, but that's not even enough, because you've probably got three upgrades of your iOS that happens, because like, I want something new, and I want to be- And it's a be... significant change, it's not just, you know, sometimes sure. it is just the icons, <clears throat> but, you know, in that two, three year span of owning that, that smartphone, you could have a significantly different looking phone that by the way, by the time you're done versus when you got and it. And this is the new world order when it mm -hmm. comes to cars. Mm -hmm. This is the way things are gonna be going. It's not gonna be the same car for seven years until you upgrade it to a new car. It's gonna be continually upgrading your car. And this is the way they're unrolling things with Tesla. And I think other automakers are gonna follow. You know, it's just the software is gonna get new and it's gonna be something new and interesting. But what it car. means, and this was a big thing at the conference last week, is that when you design a car, uh, car companies have to realize they are not computer companies, they're, and they're not <coughs> going to become computer companies. Uh, so what you have to do is design cars that have, I mean, you're basically building cars with supercomputers in them. Uh, and you need to put in a processor and the sensor suite that has enough, because I mean that car won't, you know, our Model S won't be able to do everything, uh, you know, with the updates, because it just doesn't have all the sensors. But you have to be able to build a car with the processing capability in advance that you can continue to update the software, you have this capability to expand because even some of these early Model S's, they are starting to bump up against the top. This thing's a dinosaur. Yeah. 3G, 
<laughs> it's, it's not compatible, compatible yeah, it's, with, it's with, I, with, with um, operating system seven. Right. Um, but, but to that point, you know, I mean, Elon Musk mentioned something about the car. It's like, it's a computer with wheels. It is. If you really want to build a computer with wheels, you got to start thinking like a computer company. And if you're producing a car that you cannot upgrade the hardware, as well as the software. Software I got, you know, Tesla's doing great there. But you got to be able to upgrade hardware too. And I don't care if you have a, have a MacBook Air or whatever, but if you're going to go sell a computer and say, no, you can't upgrade the memory. No, I, he can't put in a higher, uh, uh, another drive. You have a problem. And that's what the auto industry continues to do. They need to be able to, and, and if NVIDIA is they're going to be sweating out their processor, Let's be able to upgrade that processor. Let's be able to go and keep that because the life cycle of these cars are way longer. I mean, not just smartphones, but way longer than, than any type of computer. Mm -hmm. So instead of going under the hood and like adding a blower or something, you're basically going to swap out. Okay, here we go. We got the new RAM in there, boys. Yeah, yeah. You <laughs> got it. Chipping a car. Yeah, I got, yeah, I got <laughs> RAM air. <laughs> Chipping a car is completely different meaning. Yeah. You know, and also yeah. at the conference, uh, Audi. I mean, there's a lot of rivalry going on now a bit between Audi and Tesla of who is more advanced in the world of self-driving cars. You know, Audi's, Audi did the drive from... Um, from San Francisco to Las Vegas for CES, you know, they're, they're, we, they're saying they have more of these cars on the road. Of course, now this announcement from Tesla probably upsets that, that, that <laughs> Apple car. But what Audi made a point of saying is that they're trying to make this very modular. Uh, the, the component size is shrinking. Uh, in A7, the, the self-driving A7, the electronics filled the back of its cargo bay. Now, the chip basically, you know, it, it, it's small, fits in the corner of the cargo area. They're trying to make it that the sensors are all modular. So if you know, one supplier raises their prices, they can go to another supplier and raise their prices. And all this sort of ties into the idea of cars being modular, you know, that, that you, can, you can change components in and out. Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, it, it's, it's a computer on wheels, you gotta act like a computer company, and you gotta act like consumer electronics, and that's how it's gonna work. Another big thing that they were pushing at this <clears throat> conference is the idea that a self-driving car, there is no way you can program every driving situation into a self-driving car and then send it out into the world. There's always going to be new things that happen. So they're pushing this idea of deep learning, that the car is going to learn, you know, just like when you learn a sport, you know, you don't calculate every vector that the ball is going to come and, oh, that ball is coming there, I will hit it with this amount of force. No, you, you get out there and you practice it and you learn what works and you learn what doesn't work. Well, what's interesting oh. is once they get these things out there, the deep learning is just, you're learning from everyone. I mean, this is the way computer, again, I'm going back to consumer electronics. I mean, when you talk to Siri, it's not just figuring out what you say, it's also recording what your voice is mm -hmm. and going back there and, and understanding every time when Siri doesn't understand you, they're gonna go and say, okay, here's the, the ones that weren't understood. The same thing with Google. So it's constantly learning from the fleet. So, I mean, everyone is, they're all capable of the self-driving car. I mean, we're all like, oh, you know, pie in the sky. No, they're capable. The question isn't who's got the best capability and who's better at it, whatever. The question is who's got the guts mm. to put one on the road first. Yeah, and I probably, you know, the fact of Elon <clears> Musk <throat> and how, you know, in how bold he is in a lot of decisions kind of answers itself. Yeah. But to get back to the, the deep learning thing real quick, I mean, <clears throat> as much as the car has to undergo deep learning, mm. you know, you can't, once this happens, once we, once we transition over to self-driving cars, and it'll be a gradual thing, it doesn't mean you're just, you know, you're gonna open up the, your newspaper, pull up your tablet, and just to totally not pay attention. It, it's gotta be more like uh, an airplane where the pilot turns on autopilot, but is still very much paying attention to what's going on. And that's where all the human factors problems are, is, is it's all interface issues. It's, Okay, so now you're not asking me to steer. You're not asking me to touch the gas pedal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play on my phone or I'm gonna watch something on this. How do you get me back into the game when I actually have to take over for the well, car? Because I mean, there are times I'm gonna have to. I mean, this is interesting. I mean, you know, and actually, again, you know, Elon Musk has, has talked about this too. I mean, and I've talked about in terms of these almost their driverless car situations. We talked a lot about our Mercedes-Benz S-Class, which will turn the wheel and follow closely and come to a complete Cadillac stop. Super Cruise is coming out. And, and, That's next but, year. But, future, yeah. but I am not a proponent of these because what is the message to the person? Um, you still have to keep your hands on the wheel, you still have to pay attention, but not quite as much. I think that's really, really dangerous. E to, to me, either the car does it or you do it and you make that decision. Now right now, and, and you know, I'm kind of quoting what Elon Musk was talking about, it's like, you look at the Mercedes-Benz, he didn't mention Mercedes-Benz, but if you take your hands off the wheel, it shuts off. Mm -hmm. And he's like, wasn't well, that kind of the opposite way? 
I mean, if you take your hands off the wheel for some reason, I fell asleep. Isn't that when the autopilot needs to do its thing? Mm -hmm. So, and, and that goes along with my, my thing. Just, you got to either do it or the person does it. You can't, you know, it's kind of like, I mean, everyone, when you have a job and your boss goes to three people and say, I want this done, everyone's like, I think the other guy's going to do it. You know, I mean, you have to be clear who is in charge. Well, this goes gonna back to Tesla and understanding, like, how people actually drive. And there is, the, the, the two different approaches from the automakers is, this is how humans should interact with their self-driving car versus <clears throat> this is how people really do interact with their cars. And it sounds like the, the Tesla approach is, is really understanding how people really interact with their cars. Well, you know, that raises a good point. And this is a podcast that is listened to by primarily car enthusiasts, people who enjoy driving their car. Now, you know, Musk said in, in this, this conference that, you know, it, it's very possible the government someday down the road could outlaw cars being driven by a person. That's the automotive dystopian future right there. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. I mean, I, mean, I, I think that, he's kind of backed you know, away from he, that a little you know, bit, he, too. He also um, said, uh, you know, that, that autonomous driving is much easier than people think. We used to have elevator operators. You know, mm -hmm. is, is that what it's going to be, that the driver of the car is going to be extinct? I don't think in our lifetime. No, I think what it's going to be is certain situations where it is advantageous for having autopilot. And it's, it's those long highway cruises, that's where it makes sense. I don't it's also the easiest to do it there, by the way, because you're on a highway, yeah. you, the number of variables are actually pretty small. Right. Uh, he was I, saying urban environments <clears throat> are hard, especially between 10 and 50 but, miles But that's an hour. where you want to be involved. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm a driving enthusiast. Do I want to get on Route 80 and drive straight for seven hours? Yeah, not really. No. That's okay. You get I'll, to check out the times that are the most boring for, you know, you know, even most driving enthusiasts. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll play Real Racing 3 on my phone <laughs> while the thing's driving a Route 80. I'm good. And it was interesting because on Twitter, you know, that statement came out about, you know, the possibility of the government at some point outlawing driving. And he, he said, no, 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 Tesla, <laughs> we are big proponents of people driving. Right. And I mean, again, that car is a blast to drive. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Yet they're also pushing self-driving. Well, I mean, what that car does is it actually solidifies an enjoyable car to drive into the future, despite what happens in terms of oil and foreign oil and, and, and resources. So, I mean, this is really, and, and Tesla got its all started about driving in terms of, right? The Roadster, that's what got it. It was all about fun. So it sounds like, though, even though we're all driving enthusiasts, you're upbeat on self-driving cars. Yeah, I'm, I'm not upbeat on taking over. I'm, you know, I, I think Google, by the way, I got to say, Google just shot themselves in the foot when they showed that little bubble car, like, oh, this is the future. It's no like, one wants to drive that. Nobody wants yeah. that. Yeah. What they want is a Tesla Roadster. What they want is insane mode, you know, yeah. going zero to And, and both, both Tesla and Google have said, you know, humans are the flaw in this equation. But when Google came out with that car, they really said, you know, we don't like you to drive. Like, you should, but the future think, will suck. But, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But, 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 but do you think so? I mean, again, we're driving enthusiasts. We're coming at it from that lens. I saw another presentation there that said, like BMW trying to sell the ultimate driving machine when most cars are self-driving. That kind of goes away. You the don't ultimate self-driving machine? <laughs> do you care how fast a car is? When, when, when someone else, when you're driving, you want to drive fast. When someone else is driving you, I don't know that I want them to go fast. But you know, it changes, is it going to change how a customer picks a car? Does a car still have to look nice? Does a car still have to be I think fast? Still, does it still have to I, be fun? I think it does. So it has to be attractive. It still has to have nice features. It has to be comfortable. You know, if, if the car is self-driving and had, did all these things, but it was loud and, and rough on the road, yeah, people are still going to notice that. Or if it looked dorky, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is the problem. Yeah. You know, and it's like, you know, just to go back to that issue, it's like when all the hybrids were around because of these goofy little things or whatever, it, it doesn't bode well. I mean, all these, you know, the IMEV electric car, you know? I mean, that doesn't really help electric cars. They're like, oh, we have to drive around these golf carts now? That's no good. But at the same time, it was drawing attention to it. I mean, yeah, I want to put a the kick me kind. sign on the back of that Google car, <laughs> but guess what? Yes. We're, we're talking about it right now. <clears throat> and maybe the next iteration is when it comes close to you know, something that would be something that is an actually attractive car. So that's a look ahead at the future. Next on Talking Cars, we're going to be coming to you from the New York Auto Show. We'll see you then.